Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Se Hari Sambanda Sunyamaya Kanda Tahakabu Noen Jadir Kaitava Patista Chandali Nijanata Jai Ubaye Jani O Maya Kavlor Baba Kirtana Chadi Bo Patista Maki Bo Kikaja Dunya Tadrisa Gorava Madhavendra Puri Baba Gade Churi Nakori Lokabu Sahadai Janabo Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Kishina Kishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Tomada Pratista Sukare Vista Tasahasama Kabuna Manava Matara saratava se tu mi chahadara se Maji cho chadiya kirtana sostava Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Tai tustamana nirjana bhajan Pachari cho chale put ogi vai ba Nirjana bhajan Pachari cho chale kuyo ogi vai ba Prabhu sanatane paramajatane Siksa dilo yaha chinto se saba Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Seduti kata pulona savata uchai savo uchai swar koro hari namarava. Faguara yukta bada ar mukta. Kabuna Bavitos Ekara Saba Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. The, uh, <clears throat> the further meaning of this uh, wonderful bhajan, in which there are 19 verses, of which we read 10 already. <clears throat> One is truly a Vaishnava who has given up the habit of falling victim to the ferocious tigress of wealth, beauty, and fame. Such a soul is factually detached from material life and is known as a pure devotee. Someone with this consciousness of detachment has thereby become victorious over the mundane world of birth and death. One is indeed detached who moderately partakes of worldly things that are deemed necessary for living in devotional service. A devotee acting in that matter does not fall prey to the disease of material infatuation. Thus devoid of selfish attachment and endowed with the ability to see things in relation to the Lord, all sense objects are then directly perceived as being Lord Madhava himself. This is the standard of befitting renunciation. And one who realizes this is most fortunate indeed. Everything involved in such a devotee's life represents Lord Hari's personal spiritual opulence as manifest in a world of matter. On the other hand, one who engages in chanting the Lord's name with hopes of enhancing his own material reputation finds that all his activities and paraphernalia <clears throat> represent only the riches of hypocrisy. O oh mind, please reject the company of two types of persons, those desiring impersonal liberation from the material world and those who desire to enjoy the pleasure of material sense objects. 
Both of these are equally non-devotees. The things that are used in relation to Lord Krishna are objects belonging directly to the transcendental realm, and thus, having nothing to do with matter, they cannot be either owned or forsaken by persons interested in mundane enjoyment or renunciation. <clears throat> they have nothing to do with matter. They cannot either be owned or forsaken by persons interested in mundane enjoyment or renunciation. An impersonal philosopher is opposed to thinking of Krishna as an object of devotion and thus being puffed up with the false pride of imaginary liberation. He dares to criticize the true devotees of the Lord. O oh mind, you are the servant of the Vaishnavas and you should always hope for attaining devotion. Why then do you make such a loud commotion by calling to me and trying to prove the supposed supremacy of your practice of solitary worship? One who falsely gives up things that could actually be used in the Lord's service proudly calls himself a renunciate. But unfortunately, he can never become a Vaishnava by such an attitude. Abandoning his servitorship to the lotus feet of Lord Hari and resigning himself to his solitary home, whatever is gained by that exercise can only be the worthless treasure of deception. Ever engage yourself in the service of Sri Radha and keep aloof from the vicious snake of materialistic sense gratification. The glory of participating in the Lord's kirtan is not meant to bolster anyone's ambitions for personal recognition. O oh mind, why then have you abandoned the identity of being Radha's eternal servant in favor of retiring to a solitary place to practice the cheating process of so-called bhajan? The most valuable treasures amongst the Lord's preachers are the eternal personalities themselves with begging for worthless material reputation. In other words, why would one beg for worthless material reputation when they have the association of Radha and Krishna? And this material reputation is cherished only by the living dead. The Rajavasis are tr truly infused with life, and therefore they preach in order to give life to the walking corpses of the mundane world. All the songs that the Rajavasis sing about the glories of Lord Krishna are devoid of any tinge of desire for fame. Srila Bhakti Sinatha Sarasati, servant of Radha and her beloved Krishna, always hopes for kirtan, and he begs all to loudly sing the names of Lord Hari. The transcendental power of congregational chanting automatically awakens remembrance of the Lord and his divine pastimes in relation to one's own eternal spiritual form. Only in that, at that time does it become possible to go off to a solitary place and engage in a confidential worship of their lordships. So this is a problem that has always plagued India and other places, that people seek to become honored by some kind of so-called brut or a type of austerity or going off into a solitary place and making a vow to chant 10 million names of Krishna. Unless one is on the highest level of devotional service, they should not attempt such a thing. That means it's a very rare thing to be able to maintain proper Krishna consciousness and at the same time live separate from the association of devotees. <clears throat> Therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is writing here in this wonderful poem the importance of Vaishnava Sangha. Just like you see, this temple is based on Vaishnava Sangha. There's so many classes going on for adults and children. So many nice programs where people can engage in the service of Krishna. So, in the association of devotees, so why do we have so many programs? It's to promote association with Vaishnavas. And there's a very great value in this because one can be transformed. You're never transformed by a movie. You're never transformed by seeing a play or listening to some lecture. But you can be transformed by associating with a genuine Vaishnava who exemplifies the teaching of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in practical action. There's a saying, tell me and I'll forget right away. Teach me 
and I might remember something. But engage me, and I'll never forget. So what Krishna consciousness is all about is engaging people in practical acts of devotion to Krishna. And by that devotion to Krishna in the company of Vaishnavas, a person becomes purified. Of what? They become purified of tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalobadayas che chete tarinavi tam stitvam satve prasadati. They become, okay, whose child is that? She's running around by herself. This one also. They, have, they can't run around like that. Someone's going to get hurt. And the parent, they should be taken to their parents. The parents have to watch their children. So it's very important for parents to teach their children. It's very important for teachers to teach children. And in the same way, it's, it's important for adults to be in the association of proper Vaishnavas so that they can see the practical value of being Krishna conscious. There's a practical value. Practical value is tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalobadayas ji. One becomes free of the influence of lust and ignorance. Kama and uh, tama and, of course, loba, greed. These three things are very detrimental for spiritual life. They keep us anchored in the material world and because of these things, we think that the goal of life is sense gratification, and therefore we become entangled in karma bund, materialistic activities just to increase our money, our wealth, our prestige, our comfort. That makes us attached to all the objects that we accumulate, just like. Uh, Certain people have a, what's called a, a visceral personality. That means they can never let go of anything they've acquired. So if you walk into a house of, per, of a person like that, they have newspapers from 1920, piles like this in their house going up to the ceiling. You can't even walk in the house. It's so cluttered with junk that they've accumulated. And... You say, well, can I throw this out? No, 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 don't throw this out. This is very important. They never look at it. They never look at it. They never use it. But no, 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 I, I need this. This is important. So you see, that type of, you call it visceral in, in, in English, but visceral means anal in a sense. The, just like a child, when a child passes stool, they play with it. They don't, because it's part of their body. They don't think it's bad. Sometimes they eat it. They have to be trained that it's a nasty thing. If you don't train your child, then, you know, the child will poop anywhere. So, we need training, not only as children, but as adults. Because by the time we become an adult, after having watched many Disney movies, listened, read, read so many different books about Darwinism, Freud, and Marx, and others, we become convinced that the goal of life is to please our senses. And the more we have, the more important we are. And we try and do everything to live comfortably. And we try and avoid suffering. But yet, suffering comes, no matter how good we are at, at trying to avoid it. So this should be a lesson to us, that it's impossible to escape a material destiny and no amount of material arrangements, no amount of insurance, no amount of uh, uh, bulletproof vests or uh, security systems in the house or uh, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments will save us from misery. As good as we are in trying to avoid misery, still it comes. So there's a certain destiny that everyone has right from their birth and it's very difficult, or it's impossible to get out of it. 
except there's only one way to escape our material destiny that we don't know about exactly, but we, we are finding out as we go along in life. Just like I have a friend of mine, a very wealthy man, and uh, I was talking to him. He said, you know, today I bought this stock. I've been studying the stock for one year. I said, really, how many shares did you buy? He said, at least $2 million of shares. Really? He said, yeah, I'm sure it's going to go up. So the next day, there's this man on television called Kramer. He's a stock market guru. They say guru for stock market people. They should call him Ruhu. Ruhu means a wild dog, not a guru. Anyway, Kramer goes on the television and says, don't buy this stock. It's the worst decision you can make. It's going to tank. Because he said that, the stock's value went down three quarters. It went from like $30, at which my friend bought it, to down, down to you know, less than $10. So I read that in the newspaper, and I, you know, I, was, I, I didn't know the name of that stock before, but because he had mentioned, to, mentioned it to me the day before, and it was in the newspaper that, you know, such and such stock tanks. So I thought of my friend, so I called him up. I said, hey, hey what happened? He said, I don't know. I, I just lost uh, uh, one and a half million dollars. Right. Now, the previous day, he said, I'm sure it's going to go up. I've been studying it for eight months. Now, this guy is a very wealthy guy. He's very smart, right? He knows everything about stocks and investments and property. Look what happened. He lost a million and a half dollars in one day. So, is that a mistake? No, that was his karma. And there's no way he could escape it. Just like I had a friend who, is, who was a... Uh, he was an astrologer. He was a very good astrologer. His specialty was geographical astrology. He could do a, an astrological chart and tell you where, what are the most favorable places for you to live in this world, where you would be most successful. That was his specialty. But, you know, he, he was a regular astrologer. So uh, I was talking to him. I said, you know, let, let's see each other Thursday. He said, no, no, I can't see you Thursday. I said, why? This is a very bad day for me. I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, I, I have my plan. I said, what's your plan? He said, well, I'll tell you later. I don't want to tell anyone. I said, okay. So around 4 o'clock that Thursday, he called me up. I said, how are you doing? It's Thursday. He said, well, so far, so good. I said, what did you do? Well, I'm hiding out in the Redmond Senior Center in one room. I said, you're hiding out? I said, yeah, no one will bother me here. So as soon as he said that, I heard some lady screaming in the background. What are you doing here? I'm going to call the police. And, and he said, wait a minute, something's going on. Now. One second, you know, I've got to talk to this lady. I'll hang up and call you later. You know? So later on, he called me from jail. Right? In other words, he's an astrologer. He knows everything that's going to happen, right? He does the charts for people. He says... Thursday between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock is very bad. Be very careful. That, and he knew it about himself, right? What happened? It happened anyway. See, that's why astrology cannot really save you from your karma. It's a bunch of bunk. This thing about Thursday between 3 and 5 is not a good time for you. It's a bunch of nonsense. They, they, that doesn't mean anything. It's going to happen anyway. Right? So, there was once an astrologer, a palm reader, and one client came, and he was reading his future. See, the future is in the right hand, and the past is the left hand. So, if you're an expert astrologer, I mean palmist, you can, you can tell both what happened in last life and what's going to happen in this life. So, he was looking at his hand, and he said, uh-oh, yeah, oh, good. And he said, what is it, what is it? So, you're going on a long trip. Oh, and you're going to meet someone. Really? And you're gonna, they're going to make a business proposition to you. Really? And you're going to make a lot of... And then someone came and interrupted him and whispered in the astrologer's ear. He said, excuse me, I have to leave right away. I'll come back later on. And he ran away. 
So the man would say, what's going on? You know, he was reading my hand. It was just getting interesting. I'm going to meet someone. They're going to make a business proposition. By the way, all the astrologers say that. You're going on a long trip. You're going to meet someone. There will be some success. It's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. My, my auntie used to read the coffee grinds of Turkish coffee. You know, after they would drink a cup of Turkish coffee, they would turn it upside down on the, on the, on the plate, right? And then about an hour later, they would pick it up, and then she would read it. She would tell the future. It's all nonsense. You're going on a long trip. You're going to meet someone. You will fall in love, and you'll be happy ever after. You know, all kinds of nonsense like that. Anyway, the astrologer ran away. So the, the client was just sitting there with his hand like that, and, and he said to the messenger, what's going on here? He said, what did you tell him that he ran away? Well, unfortunately, I told him his house is on fire. I said, what? He was trying to tell me what's going to happen in my future, and he didn't know his own house was going to burn? That's the whole point, you see. You cannot change your destiny with astrology. At the most, it can only tell you what's going to happen. There's no way you can change it. But you can change your destiny with Krishna consciousness. That's, the, that's why I joined this movement. It took me a little while to realize this. But one day, it struck me like thunder. I was reading uh, the uh, Brahma Samhita. And there's a very nice verse in the Brahma Samhita which says, Karmani nirdahati kintu, kintu chabakti bhajan. And this verse is line from an important verse. It says, it's uh, the Brahma Samhita, verse number 54. Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bujamin. I will adore the primeval Lord Govinda. Well, here's Govinda right here. Who burns up to their roots all fruitive activities. That means like uh, all the self-interested, selfish things we've done in the past. Of those who are imbued with devotion. In other words, those who engage in the devotional service of the Lord, all their fruitive activities and the reactions to those activities are purified. Just like fire, you put something in fire, it purifies it. And impartially ordains for each the due enjoyment of the fruits of one's activities. Of all those who walk in the path of work, in accordance with the chain of their previously performed works, no less in the case of the tiny insect that bears the name of Indra Gopa than in that of Indra, king of the Devas. Now this is a little bit uh, complicated English, so we'll break it down into in easy English. Basically it means that someone who engages in Krishna's service, Krishna changes their destiny, their karmic present and future. Just like we did something in, in a previous life, we forgot about it. But the reaction is going to come in this life. When it comes, we can't figure out why it happened. Because we don't remember what we did in the past life. You see. There's no way we can remember it. But the reaction is there. It's just like this. Let's say... Our Bhaja Govinda is sitting here right now. So I go and sit next to him. And while he's listening to the class, I pick his pocket. I get his wallet. Right? And then I walk out. So it takes him about an hour to realize his wallet is not there. You know, because I'm a very good thief. Right? So then he goes around and asks him, well, who's, did you see my wallet? I think, I'm not sure. I think I had it in my pocket or maybe I must have left it somewhere. So for around three days, he's looking everywhere. He can't find it. And he's trying to think, what happened to my wallet? So he goes to the police and reports that he thinks his wallet is either lost or stolen. So the police write it down. They can't do anything. They write it down. And they give him a copy of the police report. Now, 10 years later, see, you have to understand, even a thief at one point, will tell other people what he did. Because, you know, it's, they, they want to show off. Or, so the thief had a girlfriend. And about five, six, eight years later, he told his girlfriend, 
Oh, you know that priest at the Hare Krishna temple? He said, yeah, I've seen him. What about him? I stole his wallet. He said, you what? It's bad karma for it. What do you mean bad karma? Nothing has happened. So, oh, okay. Now, you know, and I know, women can't keep secrets. So one day, she comes up and she tells somebody else. And then that person tells somebody else. And then that person tells somebody else. And ten years later, thousands of people know that this person stole Bhaja Govinda's wallet ten years ago. And someone eventually tells Bhaja Govinda, you know, this person that comes to the temple every once in a while, he said, yeah, what about him? He's the one that stole your wallet. He said, how do you know? Said, well, I can't tell you, but I know. So then he goes to the police with his report, police report, 10 years ago, right? He tells him, sir, I know who stole my wallet. So how do you know? He said, well, so-and-so told me. How do you know you're telling the truth? I don't know, but I'm giving you a name and address of a person. Why don't you go and investigate? So the police say, okay. So they go to the house of the person and they said, we have a warrant to search your house. They said, what for? What do I do? Said, we don't know what you did, but we have a warrant to search your house. So I'm going to call my lawyer. I said, okay, while you're calling your lawyer, we'll look in the house. So they walk in the house, they look, and they find the wallet because this guy was one of these visceral people. He can't let go of anything, right? They find the wallet. Now they... They arrest him, and 10 years later, he goes to court, he's convicted of theft, and he gets some jail time. Now, for 10 years, he got away with it, and he thought that it was all forgotten. So this is what happens to us. In a previous life, we commit some sinful activity, and then we die, and we're born again. We forget everything we did in the previous life. And we're living, and all of a sudden, Someone uh, hits us over the head, or someone steals from our house, or someone has an accident, and all of a sudden we realize, why are these things happening? I don't remember doing anything wrong. Well, it's just like the thief. He forgot that 10 years ago he stole from Bhaja Govinda. Right? But eventually it catches up to him. So this, this verse, Karmani Nirdahati Kintu Chabakti Bhajan, says that someone who becomes a devotee of Krishna, all their previous karma is put on hold. It's not eliminated, but it's put on hold. Why? Because we cannot engage in Krishna's service unless, unless our karma is stopped. And then, the more we engage in Krishna's service, the more we become purified of lust, anger, and greed. Then we begin to understand what Krishna consciousness is. So, astrology can't help us. Palmistry can't help us. Looking into a crystal ball can't help us. But devotional service can. Because only Krishna, who is Bhagavan, he can reverse the laws of karma. Nobody else can. Obama can't do it. Ask him, Obama, take, take away all my karma. He said, no, I can't do that. I'll give you some food stamps. So I don't need food stamps. I need to get rid of my bad karma. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, go to Hari Vilas. Maybe he can help me. Right. Of course, he doesn't recommend you to come to us. He says, well, why don't you come to my barbecue and eat a steak? You'll feel better. Right? So anyway, what gets us in trouble in life is this wicked mind, dustamana. This dustamana, wicked mind that's infected with lust, anger, and greed, and envy, and illusion, and madness. These are the things that get us in trouble. Now, if I have a dirty body, I go to the Safeway, and I buy some soap, Dove, Dial, Ivory, whatever soap. And I come back, I wet my body, I rub it with the soap, and the soap and the water emulsifies the dirt, it washes the way, and I feel clean. My question to you is, what is the soap for the dirty mind? You, has Colgate Palm Olive fabricated this, ma manufactured this soap? Anybody know what that soap is? Ah, that soap is Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. That's the soap 
for the dirty mind. Because if you have a dirty mind, there's nothing else that can clean, clean it. But by redirecting our mental preoccupation to Krishna's service and the association of devotees, don't do that, Prabhu. You're going to make, you're going to bend the, the rug and it won't go back anymore. Okay. Then, then Krishna's holy name, Krishna's beautiful face, Radharani's mercy, and Krishna's kata, Krishna's prashad, all these things purify the material body, the material mind, the material intelligence, and especially the false ego, ahankar, which is the thing that, that connects our soul to the body. The body is temporary, the soul is eternal. But because of this ahankar, we become attached to this temporary body, and anything that happens to the temporary body, it affects us. So, therefore, this false ego entangles us in this world. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was born in Purushottam Chetra Sri Jagannath Puri, and his father was the, also the great Vaishnava Acharya, uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur uh, Paramahamsa. And uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he had 11 children. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was his fourth child. But he prayed to Krishna, please, he said, I'm praying to you, give me a child that will be infused with the potency of Lord Vishnu so that he can preach this Krishna consciousness because this world needs it. Everyone is ruining their life, running after the phantom of sense gratification material attachment, material prestige, and ruining their lives, just like in India today, millions and hundreds of millions of people are ruining their, ruining their lives by smoking, drinking, gambling, philandering, and other nonsense activities. Where before, India was Bharat Varsa, the land of Sanatan Dharma. And today is the land of Adharma, propagated in the schools, just like, I'll give you one example. In Rameshwaram, from Rameshwaram to Manar Island in Sri Lanka, Lord Ram built the Setu, Band, Setu Raman, the bridge, right? Now in the 19th century, the British renamed it Adams Bridge. Today it's called Adams Bridge. It's not called Setu Bandhu. May Setu Raman. You see? But what does Adam have to do with India and Sri Lanka? Absolutely nothing. They made up, they made up a myth that Adam crossed the, the uh, ocean from uh, Rameshwaram to uh, Sri Lanka. And this is his bridge. You see? This is a purposeful way of destroying and belittling the Vedic history. A bridge that was made 1.7 million years ago by Lord Rama. And the Indian, Indian government also said we have no proof that this was a man-made bridge. Well, of course it's not man-made. It's made by Ram and the Vanaras. They were not men. Ram is God, and the Vanaras are uh, very evolved monkeys. Hanuman himself is half monkey, half human. He's, 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 he's indirectly the son of Shiva and Parvati. So they're not human beings. But see, because India has been contaminated by the British educational system, which has proliferated what's called humanistic education. Humanistic education, you can look it up on the, on the internet, it's, and that's the system that's practiced in America and in India and all over the world now. It says that there is no supreme uh, supernatural being that created the world. It happened by a big bang. Like, for example, let's have a big bang in your kitchen, 
right? We'll set up a bomb in your kitchen as a big bang. Do you think something will be created by it or destroyed by it? What do you think? Destroyed. Exactly. But the scientists, the so-called PhDs, they're claiming that originally there was a big bang and because of the law of gravity, everything came together and produced uh, salamanders and trees and buffaloes and human beings. Now you think a, a buffalo would be produced by an explosion in your kitchen? No. Right. Okay. Now see, I, have a, I, I was buying a house once. I was looking at different properties. I had an insurance agent and his name was Rick Smith. So when I first met him, he gave me his card. And I looked at the card, it said, Rick Smith, PhD. I was thinking, my God, what's going on? PhD is trying to sell houses. There must be something wrong. So I said, hey, Rick. I said, uh, I didn't know you had a PhD. And he started laughing when I said that. He said, oh, <laughs> he said, that's my little joke. I said, what do you mean? I said, he said, PhD stands for post hole digger. I said, what? I said, it's a post hole digger. I said, what's that mean? He said, you know, when they make a fence, you go to Home Depot and you buy this uh, type of strange shovel that has two little shovels at the end and you sort of go like this in the ground and you stick it together and you pull it up. You, you can dig post holes and then you put posts in it and you make a fence. I said, hey, Rick, I said, you're a witty guy. He said, I know. I said, people are really impressed with my card. <laughs> now, you know, you see, this, this is what a PhD is. A, there, there might be some genuine PhDs, but most of them are no better than Rick. They're no better than a post hole digger. They tell you that we all came from monkeys. Now, does that make sense? You have a monkey in your family? No. You have a monkey in your family? No. See, now, little boys can understand. But after he goes to school and takes a science class and learns about evolution, he might come home and say, Mommy, I didn't know we all came from monkeys. You see, they're going to try and teach you in school that you come from a monkey. You see? Now, does that make sense? Have you ever seen a monkey or any, any animal give birth to a human being? Let's say there's some prototypical ancestor of the monkeys and the humans. Do you think they would give birth to a human being? Absolutely not. There's no way. You see? So this young gentleman is smarter than Stephen Hawking's. All these big scientists that, like Stephen Hawking said, I don't know if you know him, he's, he's a paraplegic. He's one of, they call him the modern Einstein. He's like this. So he has a computer to speak, right? And he's, he wrote an article, Man has ruined the environment on the Earth. We have to all go to Mars. So my answer to Stephen Hawkins is, Stevie boy, you go first. And you can send us a postcard and tell us how it is up there. Now, is this man crazy or what? He said we have to go to, go to Mars. Is anybody going to go to Mars? No. Of course not. Right. So is he a PhD or is he a post hole digger to say such a, such a thing? He's a post hole digger. He's out there digging holes in the ground. That's all he is. Even though he's touted to be such the modern Einstein. You understand? Okay. So Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur took birth. He appeared in this world as the fourth child of Bhakti Vinod, and he was actually a ray of Vishnu, a highly empowered personality who turned the Vedic Vaishnava Dharma into a reality almost a hundred years ago. He took a vow to chant the names of Krishna one billion times before, the, before he started his mission of preaching Krishna consciousness and he did it. It took him four years. During that time, he fasted. During that time, he performed a lot of severe austerities and chanted. And then he started what's called the Godiamat, a very dynamic preaching movement to spread the glories of Krishna in this world. And because of him, we're here today in our little Samamish 
Sammamish is an Indian village, but not Southeast Asian Indian. No. American Indian, right? Sammamish is an Indian word, right? So in this little place, like 100 years ago, there was nothing here. Maybe a few houses, that's it. Today, it's become a very, one of the best places in the United States to live. It's called the friend, one, one of the ten friendliest cities in the United States. The or the friendliest city, right? It's friendly because we have our Balaram Leela and his wife and <laughs> Amritananda, our DYS <laughs> teachers. That's why it's so friendly, you know. And it's friendly because of the temple, because everyone can come, they have free prasadam. I was looking at one lady came in today. She had darshan. She came downstairs and she was looking for the prasadam. I said, it's right here. And she had a big smile. I said, oh, thank you. And I was thinking to myself, isn't this a wonderful thing? Anybody can walk in. They have darshan, there's education. Like today we had chess classes. 82 kids came with their parents. 82 kids. And then yet last night we had Vedic mathematics. 80 kids came. They got their degrees for the first cycle of Vedic mathematics. And the next cycle starting in three weeks. And two, three weeks from now we're beginning a new thing which is called computer programming for kids. Well, you're going to have it again. And then uh, one month from now, or three weeks from now, we're going to have our first class in Inventor's Circle. You can become an inventor. We're going to have all these different things. You can put them together and invent something. And we're going to have some top flight uh, scientists here, American scientists, who are going to volunteer to help us, help us, our kids learn to be inventors. And then, <clears throat> two months from now, we're going to start our first pea patch for our community, where kids can, will have 10 square feet of garden space to plant your own garden at our farm. So these are all interesting things, you see. But what's the purpose behind it? The purpose behind it is Vaishnava Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. It's not planting peas or inventing the next uh, uh, you know, iPhone. It's associating with devotees. It might be through the medium of chess, it might be through the medium of a garden, it might be through the medium of uh, Vedic mathematics. But the association of devotees is the real added value of this temple. Therefore, it's incumbent on our devotees to be genuine devotees, not phonies. That's what this song that we sang today is all about. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasai Thakur is warning anyone who dares to be a Vaishnava not to be an imposter, but to be a genuine Vaishnava. Because if you dress like this, you put tilak on, you have mala, and you're an imposter, it causes severe deception and pain to people. Because in this world, it's very hard to find someone to trust. Someone who can actually do good to you. And if we misrepresent Krishna and actually hurt people, it's the worst crime that someone can commit. Because someone comes to become Krishna conscious and they end up being taken advantage of. That's the worst crime. Because it's a rare thing for a person to have their curiosity about God aroused. And actually to go out of their way to find out who God is. And if they come to a holy place where they're expecting to find out and they meet an imposter, a person who dresses like a devotee but is actually a demon, it's called a, wolf's, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That is the worst thing that can happen to a person. So, Bhakti Sanat Sarasati Thakur is saying, don't come to enjoy Krishna. Come here so Krishna can enjoy you. Come here to serve the Lord. Don't come here to be served. Don't come here to be Prabhu. Come here to be Das. And learn to serve the Lord selflessly. Don't come here to satisfy selfish desires. Okay, now, people come here, they're all here for some selfish desire. They want to learn chess, they want to learn Vedic mathematics, they want to learn computer programming, they want to eat for free, whatever. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But through Vaishnava Sadhu Sangha, this can be changed. See? Just like one person came here, he was an American guy, 
So whenever I see anybody walk in the door, I always say, hello, Hare Krishna, how are you? My name is so-and-so. Is this the first time you're here? And the man said, yes. I said, where do you come from? He said, I come from New York. I said, oh, we have a temple there. Have you, have you ever gone to our temple? He said, yeah, I've gone there about 11 times. I said, really, do you know so-and-so? No. Do you know so-and-so? No. Do you know so-and-so? No. Do you know anyone there? He said, no. He said, you are the first devotee that ever talked to me. He said, I went to the, this temple 11 times. I stayed there two, three hours every time. Nobody talked to me. They all like, walked past me. You're the first one that ever said hello. I said, really? I said, that's a serious problem. He said, you better believe it. I said, how come you came here? I said, I didn't give up on Krishna. But I'm almost have given up on Krishna's devotees. You, you have inspired me that there's some hope in your movement. You see, why? Because Krishna consciousness, what differentiates it from other uh, philosophies, especially the impersonalist school? It's personalism. Personalism is based on interpersonal relationships. You say, that's what differentiates. We don't say, sit in a room by yourself and meditate on nothing. Can you meditate on nothing? No. It's nonsense. There's no such thing as meditating on, or meditate on the light. No. It's difficult. The light is a little better than nothing, but it becomes nothing after a little while because there's no differentiation in it. Yeah. There was one black preacher on the radio, and he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you the truth. I tell you that we need some money for this ministry. But I also got to tell you that nothing of nothing is always nothing. <laughs> now that man is brilliant. He's a brilliant man. Nothing of nothing. In other words, he was saying, if you don't send anything, I don't get anything. That we're, therefore, there's nothing to keep this program going. Right? But the way he said it was very, very good. Right? So, nothing of nothing is always nothing. So, if I don't do anything for Krishna, I don't have anything to show for it. Therefore, there will be nothing. No freedom from karma. No freedom from lust, anger, greed. I'll just continue being a victim of my own ignorance and the laws of material nature. Just like if an Indian comes to America, to New York City, Kennedy Airport, he goes to a Hertz rental car, rents a car, and drives on the left-hand side of the street. So policeman comes, the cop comes and says, sir, show me your license. So he shows some license, Bombay. You know. He said, did you just come to this country? He said, yes, yes, sir. It's okay. Do you know we drive on the right hand side? He said, uh, it doesn't matter. He said, what do you mean it doesn't matter? I come from India. I'm Indian. I drive on the left hand side. He said, oh, okay. I'm going to write you a thousand dollar ticket, sir. And I'm going to take your license away. How can you take my license? <laughs> you want me to arrest you also? You're going to resist arrest? He said, no, 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 no. He said, now this ticket, you have to pay right away because you're a foreigner here. We don't know if you're going to stay for one week or two weeks. And you might leave the country without paying. So I'm going to take you down to the station anyway until you pay the thousand dollar ticket. During that time, I'm going to impound your car. And if you say anything, sir, I will take you in front of a judge for resisting arrest. How do you like that, sir? How do you like that in your Indian head? Then the man wakes up. He realizes that, yeah, he's Indian, but he's in America. And when in Rome, do as the Romans. When in America, follow American rules, no matter what. Just like they caught these two guys, two Gujarati jewelers. They hired thugs, dressed them up as Hasidic Jews. Hasidic Jews have these black suits on, black hat, and they have big beards. And they paid them to rob a Hasidic Jewish jewelry shop. Now, in, in New York City, the jewelers there are extremely rich. They'll have maybe $20 million of jewelry in their shop. You know, and there, there's a lot of high-level security. 
But because these guys dressed as Hasidic Jews, the owners thought they knew who they were, so they let them in. They, they could see them on their cameras, but they let them in. They went in, and they pulled their guns out, and they robbed them, right? But the security system in this particular building where all the jewelers are is so good that they don't even have to push a button to alert the police. The police were alerted electronically, so when the robbers came out, they were arrested. Then they found out that their beard was false, they were not Hasidic Jews, they were just thugs, and they told them who hired them, these two Gujarati Indian jewelers. So they arrested the jewelers. Okay? Now, there was a long trial, and the jewelers said, well, you know, uh, we didn't know the laws of America. So that failed. Then they said, well, we, we had, we had uh, temporary insanity. You know, when, when, when everything else, when you don't have any defense, and you say, oh, we were temporarily insane. Well, that failed also. So they were convicted. Now it comes up to the, to the uh, uh, you know, sentencing. And the judge said, you know, he said, you two guys, you came to this country. You were doing well. You had a $7 million business, but you were greedy. And you thought that you could get away with the same nonsense that you do in Bombay here in New York. Now, this is going to be a lesson to you that you can't do that in our country. And he convicted them. They were convicted, and they were given 15-year sentences. And they had to pay back some kind of reparations to the Hasidic uh, jewelers, right? And their, their names and their pictures, you know, Mr. Satpal Patel, 15 years. Mr. Uh, Kumar uh, Satya Bhatia, 15 years. Criminals with the pictures and everything. Now, is it worth it to do such a thing? It's nonsense, right? But they thought, oh, we do all these things in Bombay. We can do it here also. The Americans are all stupid. And their laws, they'll take, us, take them 20 years to convict us. You know, we'll get a good lawyer. Oh, no, no, no. They were convicted in two years, and they were put in jail. So we can't get away with anything. Therefore, we should understand that if there's a way to put a stop to our karma, karmani near the hati kintu chabakti bhajan, we should take it. We should take it right away. And the only way that I know of, and I've seen it in my own life, and it's worked for me, it's worked for many people in the past, and it'll work for you, is to become a genuine devotee. And how do you become a devotee? By associating with devotees. How does an iron rod become fire? You put it in the fire long enough that when you take it out, it's red hot, and whatever you touch turns to fire. Iron rods are not fire, but you can make them like fire by keeping them in the fire. In the same way, I might not be a devotee today, I might not have any faith in God, but if I associate with devotees, birds of a feather flock together. Eventually, in the association of devotees, I will become a devotee. So, Bhakti Sinanta Saraswati started a, a uh, dynamic preaching movement to help people become devotees. And he inspired his, his disciples to spread this movement around the world. None of them were able to do it out of his 10,000 disciples except Srila Prabhupada. Why? It's a quite, not that they were bad devotees. Many of them were very highly educated. I met one of Prabhupada's god brothers once. I thought I was meeting Krishnamurti. This guy was so educated, such a gentleman. He could speak so well. He knew four or five languages. He was dressed impeccably. You know, I was very amazed. You know, these were the type of people. In fact, Gandhi, Gandhi and the guy named Patel, and the Gandhian people, they organized a protest in front of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's temple in Calcutta, the Bhag Bazar temple, in the 1930s. And they protested, and they were screaming, ha, hu, ha, ha, hu, ha, like that, screaming at the top of their lungs, because they were saying Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was taking the cream of the cream of, Ind of British, of uh, Indian youth, and turning them into peaceful Vaishnavas and not letting them become members of Swaraj movement. You see? Does that say something about Gandhi? 
Yes, it does. So when they were there screaming, Gandhi himself screaming, the, the disciples told Bhakti Siddhanta, what are we going to do? He said, just ignore them. They're like crows uh, making noise or wild dogs barking. They will go away if you ignore them. And that's what happened. You see, they got preoccupied with something else. They forgot it. So we're here today because of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Because he was able to inspire Prabhupada. And Prabhupada had so much faith in his guru that in spite of impossible odds, he came to America on his own with seven dollars in his pocket. There's a car blocking all the cars. Okay. It's an Altima. Okay, there is an Altima, Altima car. Black color. Black colored. 368. 368. YQUS. YQUS. It's going to disappear in about 10 minutes. Of course, you might not want your car anymore. I don't know. This is a good way to get rid of it. It'll be impounded by the Sammamish police. So if you have a black Ultima, Ultima, Ultima is made by what, Nissan? Or? Nissan. Nissan, yeah. It was made by, uh, black, if you have a Nissan, black Ultima, so if no one is jumping up now with their hair standing on it, running out, that means they're downstairs in one of the classes. All right? Or working in the kitchen. Remember one day, we looked everywhere, we couldn't find a person, the person was working in the kitchen. So, if it's not your car, thank Krishna. If it is your car and you're ignoring what I'm saying, you can only blame yourself, nobody else, when you walk out and don't see it anymore. Okay. So, now we're going to sing this bhajan a little bit more because it's a very, very important bhajan. And it has a lot of deep meaning to it. Dusta mana tumi kishera vaishna patistara tare nirjanagare So this is a beat It's a waltz Go slow. Patistara tare nirjane kare tabahari nama ke vailaka pa. Patistara tare nirjane kare tabahari nama ke vailaka ita. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Chadira Patisha Sukhere Rabista Chadana Ki Paranaya Ravai Pa Anaka Kamini, Divasa Yamini, Babi Yaki Kajan Anitya Sesa. Tomada Kanaka, Bogejanaka. Kana kere dwari pune bhumata Ka 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Bolo Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama 
Tara Patista, Shukare Vista, Tara Sahasana Tabo Namana. Mata Sarata Vase, Tumija de Vase, Maje Jocha de la Kirtana Shostava.
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare.
Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada 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 Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada
Yeah, and then he's not paying attention. Yeah. He's, you know, he's got to stand right next to us. Yeah. yeah, because he's the one that's leading, actually. I mean, the, 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 the cartels are always the leader. We're going to have our Pushpanjali ceremony now. We're all very fortunate to be in this spiritual lineage coming from Krishna through Lord Chaitanya and the six Goswamis. It's good. We're very, very fortunate to have the association of these wonderful Vaishnava Acharyas. And tonight, the topmost of those acharyas, who is <coughs> one of the manjaris of Krishna who appeared in this world, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. That's why he did so many amazing, wonderful things, clearing the way to spread this movement all over the world. And by his grace, Srila Prabhupada came to the West. Srila Prabhupada said, I don't consider you my disciples. I consider you the associates of my Gurudev, who he has sent to help me accomplish his mission. That's the way he saw his disciples. And that's, that humility is the real vision of a Vaishnava. <clears throat> so now we'll begin the Pushmanjali. Om Agnyati Mirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmashi Gurave Namaha Shi Chitanya Manubistam Shapitam Yena Bhutali Swayam Rupakadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shi Guru Shi Yuta Patakamalam Shi Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shi Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sidevai Tam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shirata Krishna Padan Sahaguna Lalita Sivishaka Anvitam Scha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamani Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namini Shri Varsavanavi Devi Daitaya Kripabdaya Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Daine Prabhave Namaha Madhur Ujjvala Premadya, Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Da, Shri Goro Karuna Shakti, Vigrahaya Namostute, Namaste Gurvani, Shri Muttaye Dinatarine, Rupa Nuga Virudapa, 
Apasadantadvantaharine Namo Gorakishoraya Shakshad Vaira Gyamurtaye Vipralambara Sambode Padambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchit Ananda Namine Gora Shakti Swarupaya Rupa Nuga Varayate Gora Bira Gora Bira Gora Bir Baba Bumestwam Nirdesta Sajjana Priya Vaishnava Sarva Bumashi Jaganataya Te Nama Vansha Kalpa Tarabhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Guru Se Namaha Panchatatvat Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Kopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Jayatam Surator Bangor Mama Manda Matirgati Matsarvasva Padambojo Radha Madana Mohano Divyadvindaranya Kaupa Drumadaha Srimadrat Nagara Simhasana Stato Srimadrata Srila Govinda Devo Prestali Bihi Sevyamano Smarami Smarami Sriman Rasa Rasarambi Vamsivata Tatastita Karsan Venus Vanir Gopir Gopina Takstri Estuna Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Stute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasudhi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Sivarsabhanavi Devi Daitaya Kripabdaye Krishna Sambandha Vigyana Dayane Prabhave Namaha Madhur Ujjwala Premadya Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Da Shri Gora Karuna Shakti Vikrahaya Namostate Namaste Goravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupa Nuga Virudapa Apasidanta Dvantaharine Pushpanjali Swaha
हरे राम हरे राम 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 बोलो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे बोलो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे बो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 नम ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती नामिने श्री वर्ष बानवी देवी दहिताय कृपाब्दे कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायने प्रभव नम मधुर उज्ज्वल प्रेमद्य श्री रूपानुग भक्ति श्री गोरखरुण शक्ति विग्रहाय नमस्तुते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्रीमूर्ता दीनथारिणे रूपनुग विरुदाप अपसिदंतवंतहारिणे पुष्पंजलि स्वाहा बोलो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम राम नम ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती नामिनी आई ऑफर माई रिस्पेक्टफुल बेसिस इज डिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती हु इज वेरी डियर टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण हैविंग टेकन शेल्टर एट इज लोट स्ट्रीट श्री बाट सुबानवी देवी दयिताय कृपाब्दे कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान Ayane prabhave namaha Oh from my respectful base and sister Shila Varsaban and Videvi Daita Dasa another name of Bhakti Sananta Saraswati who was favored by Shrimati Radharani and who was the ocean of transcendental mercy and the deliverer of the science of Krishna Madhur Ujjwala Premadya Shri Rupa Nuga Bhakti da Shri Gora Karuna Shakti Vigraha namostute I offer my respectful obeisances unto you the personified energy of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy who delivered devotional service enriched with conjugal love of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna coming exactly coming exactly in the line of revelation of Shila Rupa Goswami Namaste Goravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine रूपानुगा विरुदापा अपसिद्धंत द्वंतहारिने 
I offer my respectful obeisances unto you, who are the personified teachings of Lord Chaitanya. You are the deliverer of the fallen souls. You do not tolerate any statement against the teachings of devotional service enunciated by Srila Rupa Goswami. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai Pushpanjali Swaha It's a very wonderful thing to glorify Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. Srila Prabhupada has kindly connected us to him and the other Vaishnava Acharyas. We have a debt of gratitude that is impossible to pay back, but we can try by becoming very sincere servants of Radha and Krishna, Radha Nila Madhava, and Srila Prabhupada, and all the Vaishnava Acharyas, especially his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Prabhupada. <clears throat> we work together cooperatively, and we can do something very wonderful in Seattle. We want to open a new temple. We're going to develop our farm. We're going to develop our educational outreach to Bellevue, to Bothell, to Kent. We need inspired devotees to do these things. We, we have to do not 100%, do 1,001% to do this. So we need your help. We, meaning Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadhi Thakur, Gorkishwar Babaji, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Jagannath Babaji, the Six Goswamis, Lord Chaitanya, Madhavendra Puri, right back, Veda Vyas, Narada and especially, well, Krishna doesn't need our help, but he's giving us a chance to take the credit. So we should work very seriously now to do all these new programs. Another program that I think we should definitely do is to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring with, um, with, uh, children of poor families in this country. We don't have to do it all ourselves, but we have to be the conduit, the connectors that connect professional people who want to give back by giving one hour or two hours a week. We supply the computers, we supply the video cameras to the kids, and these professional people can mentor them. They don't have to go driving around, they can do it right from their home. This would be a tremendous program. Of course, it's not exactly Krishna conscious, but it would put us in contact with many people. We can do the same thing for the DYS program and other teaching programs, put it all on the internet. Now, all of you are computer whizzes. I'm an idiot. I don't know how to do this, but you're all computer whizzes, but don't just do it for Microsoft or Amazon. Now do it for Krishna. Then we need also to put on the internet our entire Vedic school so that anyone can homeschool their kids right from their home with a computer and a, and a video camera and a, and a writing pad that's connected to the computer. We can give people an education anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, in Krishna consciousness, in Vedic mathematics, in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, in uh, advanced courses in the Bhagavad Gita. But if we just sleep and eat, we're not going to do anything. Somebody has to have the vision, and then people have to believe in it, and then we go out and do it. It's not only opening a second temple. That we're going to do. But this is much bigger. To preach through the Internet. I was talking to one minister who came here, 
for lunch the other day, Thursday. He told me he preaches to a half a million people all over the Internet, around the world. How, what's wrong with us? Why can't we do that? We'll start one by one. Let's start with uh, children who are in poor families but who want to get help in their school work. Let's start with sincere people who can't come to the temple but want to take part in the DYS class. Let's start with mothers and fathers who don't want to send their children to, to public school because it's too dangerous, too contaminating and too dangerous. So we can educate those kids at home with our computer and our setup, our whole synergy school is there. And we can also help people who want to become genuine devotees wherever they are in the world through the internet. Now we have all these internet engineers. Let's do something. Prabhupada said, don't go to the grave with your knowledge. Share your knowledge before you die, right? So we don't have much time. We don't know when we're going to die. We need help. These are a lot of important programs. I don't care if someone else is doing it or not doing it. We have to do it. We have the ability to do it. It's not a question of money. It's just a question of getting fired up devotees that are willing to sacrifice in their spare time for something worthy as this, which is spreading Krishna consciousness with dynamic ideas. Just like this chess. This chess program today attracted 82 children with their parents. Right? The Vedic mathematics finished the cycle with 50 kids who got a, uh, a certificate. Now they're going to start. They tell me it's going to take us two or three months to start the next cycle. I said, you're crazy. I said, not more than three weeks. In fact, three weeks is too much. Two weeks from now, the next cycle should start. You know, two or three months, everyone will forget. You know? And now we're going to teach computer programming for kids. Our Kumar Prabhu and other people are willing to do it. We have to start that no later than two weeks from now. We should put it on the Internet right now. These programs, they, people say, oh, this is not Krishna conscious. Prabhupada didn't want this. Well, maybe. But the idea is to get people to associate with devotees. That's the whole idea. Now, are you a devotee? You want to preach? This is a way to preach. You meet people. You do something for them that they appreciate. Then they might ask you some questions about Krishna. That's the whole point. They should see good people dedicating their good time and energy to spread this Krishna conscious message. But if you just want to have a happy family life and eat and sleep, okay, I don't, I'm not against that. But if you want to go back to Godhead in this lifetime, take my advice. Put out 1,001%, not 101%, not 201%. We're talking about 1,001% of your spare time and start doing some things that are creative, creatively increasing the awareness of Krishna. So thank you very much. We got a lot to do. Take some prasadam, go to take rest early, and we're going to start tomorrow. All glories to Prabhupada. Huh? What are we going to do tomorrow? Oh, but before that, we have to chant 16 rounds, come to the temple, see the deities. You know, there's a lot to do tomorrow. And we have the after, and once we open the second temple, we're going to have two major programs a day on Sunday. We're going to have the Sunday feast at 12 o'clock in Bellevue, and we're going to have the Sunday feast here. So don't make any plans for your weekends. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you.